Life is beautiful without ill health. We enjoy the company of our loved ones. We smile. We laugh. In all, we have fun. In 2005, she became ill and thought she had malaria or typhoid fever. The illness started in October 2004. It was very difficult to diagnose. It started with pains all over me and then I was first being treated for malaria, typhoid. And after several treatments, the ailment did not heal. She was completely ignorant of the cause of her ailment. At the time the ailment commenced, with the different reactions I was having to my body, I wasn't able to walk, my body was changing, I had spots. Some people even said maybe I had AIDS because nobody understood where the spots came from. My hair was falling off. Close family members said ah, where they went. They said, ah, I, pardon me for speaking vernacular, Anilati boy issue knew, you know, and it cost us 80,000 to body issue. A close relation of mine brought some select people to pray and they said they were going to have to beat the demon. Talk babu me at that point in time. I felt sorry for myself. The truth of the matter is that had I not taken the proper steps I took at that time medically, definitely I would have died. While some thought it was spiritual, emotional abandonment was diagnosed by a qualified herbal therapist and that um, they will give me some herbs called forget me not to treat it. And later a doctor looked at me because I was swelling in some areas and said I had what they call an autoimmune disease. I was directed to lose. I was now diagnosed with a rare condition called SLE. Systemic lupus erythematous, a kidney disorder caused by stress was diagnosed. We had never heard of such a condition before. We discovered that it's actually an autoimmune disease whereby your immune system shuts down and starts to fight against your body. At that time, I had developed what they call the lupus symptoms. My skin had started to change. I was losing my hair, I had pains all over my body, I couldn't walk. The heavy dose of steroids I was given gave me hypertension, gave me peptic ulcer. I had what you call steroid-induced psychosis. Because she could afford it, she decided to go to the UK in February 2005. Barely 24 hours upon arrival, she was wheeled into the emergency room at the Guy and Thomas Hospital. It was there they found out that the condition had damaged her kidneys. The day I arrived in England, I was supposed to see my uh, a specialist on lupus. But the following day, I had arrested breathing. I couldn't breathe well, so they had to call 911 and I was rushed to St. Thomas's Hospital, London Bridge. The doctors said they suspected that my kidneys may be impaired. They decided that in order to find out the extent of damage, they would do what they call a kidney biopsy. Ten days after the kidney biopsy, my left kidney ruptured. She was placed on morphine, a painkiller every five minutes, due to the excruciating pain. Surgery was later performed to remove her left kidney. In order to get to the ruptured kidney, they removed two ribs from my left side and removed the kidney and gave me 67 stitches across me. I didn't wake up from that surgery until six days after. This is not the end of the story. The SLE had also damaged their other kidney. This resulted in acute renal failure. The implication 
was that she had no kidney. The kidney subserves three basic functions in the body. The primary function is the elimination of waste products from the body. And then this is followed very closely by the balance of water and electrolyte. You know, you drink a lot of water and then you pee. And in that process, the body regulates the salt and water balance in the body. And then there is the third function of helping with making of blood. That's the way we can put it in a layman's language. When the kidneys are in health, the pointer is the volume and the quality of urine that the individual is producing. And the, when the kidney is diseased, then the volume of the urine will progressively or acutely diminish. I made a very slow recovery because my body was already immunocompromised at that point. My blood pressure went to 290, 150. And I had a seizure in my brain and I went into coma. I was in that coma for almost 19 days to 21 days. I, I can't remember precisely, but almost three weeks. They decided that maybe the, I was on a life support machine, that maybe at that point I would either pass on or I would come out of that coma a vegetable. It was advised that maybe they go and bring my kids from Nigeria. Maybe if I smell them, I would come out of that coma. It was the voice of my second daughter, Teniola, that I heard, and I woke up. Mommy, don't die. Mommy, don't die. I woke up from that coma, but I was paralyzed from neck down. My throat had collapsed. I was being fed through my nose. For her to live, she was placed on dialysis thrice a week at 300 pounds a session to remove waste from her system. And I was to either come and do dialysis as an outpatient at 300 pounds a session, or find and go back to Nigeria. So I opted to go back to Nigeria. She returned to Nigeria to continue dialysis after spending six months at the Guy and Thomas Hospital in London. At this crucial stage, she had two choices, either to continue on dialysis and live, or to simply expire. She chose to live. She continued dialysis at St. Nicholas Hospital in Lagos. She had three sessions a week. I now started doing my dialysis in St. Nicholas Hospital at 28,000 Naira per session. I did dialysis there for another eight months. And my God, it was as if somebody put a straw through my little wealth I had acquired over years of practice and started siphoning the money. But at some point, there was light at the end of the tunnel. It was while she was undergoing dialysis that she got information and assistance to the Institute of Kidney Disease and Research Center in Ahmedabad, India. Four months later, she came back home thin but alive. After my transplant, I still had issues. The post-transplant drugs gave me diabetes. As we speak, I still inject insulin two types of insulin twice a day. And the diabetes gave me cataracts. After I did surgery in my left eye, it was discovered that I had the hypertension from the kidney failure had affected my retina. So I don't have a central vision in my left eye. It took me another 10 months of looking for money before I could go back for surgery in my second eye. And to God be the glory, I'm able to see now. Being Pei is a victim of kidney failure. She tells her own story. I first presented with swelling. That's a sign of renal impairment. When I was 11 years old, 
At some point, when I began to notice the swelling again, I went to the hospital. I think then I was already deteriorating. This time around, the swelling wouldn't go away. I felt like life was going out of me, you know. I began to find it difficult to move around. I, I was already paralyzed. I think my, on my right, my left arm, um, my right leg, yes. It was difficult to move. So I was on a wheelchair and then they rejected me in the clinic. They told me to go to the emergency, which I did, and they also rejected me there. Asked me, you know, they were tossing me here and there, but they finally accepted me at the clinic. Results of research have shown that only one in three survive. This is due to lack of proper and regular use of immunosuppressive drugs. Post-transplant recipients are on drugs for life. Mrs. Oyilola is a kidney failure survivor who went into relapse and almost lost her life. Bati mo de seta la la koko ti mo pala wa si Nigeria. Mi ti lo bi ose meji. Mo tun bere another sickness. Ki I say ki sasa te ya le se. To lo po logun lo ni o do la ko to logun. Ta bo to wa ka ti to ye ko logun, to logun, Oluwa nse re ni. I say ki sasa te ya le so pe a. There are a lot of people who are suffering from kidney disorder. It is no respecter of age, class, color, or status. If I was just seven years old when he was diagnosed with kidney disorder, it is realized that there is so much to be done. There is no information center, organization, or support group on kidney disorder. Yejide believes she is saved for a purpose and is determined to make the purpose succeed. Yes, when people ask me what led me into opening the center, the truth of the matter is that I'm a most unlikely person to set up this kind of thing. I got the vision when I was operating my right eye. I had just removed the patch it was actually on the operating table that I had the voice the name of the center and the aims so by the time I got to my hotel room in Ahmedabad I was able to put on the um, hotel letter heading everything that I had heard in that vision that the center must be set up to impact people with this kind of problem to give information, to give advice, to give support, to give succor. That was in 2007. To God be the glory, my 29th patient left on Monday.
four times. It's a privilege for me now to tell the story and to impact others into helping to at least give hope and life to others. That is the purpose of this center. Patients diagnosed with this disease will go through the following. Initial undiagnosed illness, removal of damaged and ruptured kidney, dialysis, thrice a week including medication, stem cell kidney transplant, and post-transplant management and care for life. The center is a support group assisting post-transplant patients to access drugs at affordable cost and make post-transplant follow-ups also available to them. She has acquired an office space for counseling and hopes to do more. The cost is huge and even when it is affordable, how do they manage the new kidney? A transplant patient is left to manage diabetes for the rest of his or her life. The post-transplant drugs cost a lot of money and it is not readily available in Nigeria. It will cost a patient an average of 1.5 million naira every year on drugs. A post-transplant patient is restricted to a particular type of diet and lifestyle to live longer. There is so much to be done and we can do it together. We can change the world, but we can touch a few lives. You never can tell who might just be the next in line. It is one way of being our brother's keeper to contribute to this in some way. Join this course today and save a life, save a family from pain and anguish.